Hi everyone. So I understand that you know you've been going through a very cryptic course in the sense that you know uh, there are a lot of things that I've been discussing about in a very short time and it is difficult to assimilate all these things in a short period. But the intention of this course is, is to basically get you into the details of the workings of different components of docker and after this after this course you will have uh, some basic idea of how the system actually works and then you can venture out into creating your own containers now as part of this exercise we are look, going to look into another complex aspect of docker called the union file system now, as you can <laughs> imagine right you know uh when you pulled a uh, image called nginx at the beginning of the course what you saw is there were five layers right and what are those layers why do why did docker build it that way now the reason why docker built it that way is you know let's say a user pulls that image and makes changes to it and commits it so there now there'll be sixth layer available let's say uh, another user pulls it and then commits make some changes to the the image and layer and then commits it so you will have a seventh layer now irrespective of whether you know the first user created only made only one change and second user also made a one change but what you see is a cumulative effect but the interesting aspect here is if i as a user pull the base image i get to get the changes related to or pertaining to uh, or not, not changes i get the base image with those five layers whereas you know if uh, someone else pulls the image checked in by the first user he gets not just the, not just those five layers but also the changes pertaining to um, um, those five layers made by the first user and so is the case with the second one now the beauty of this aspect is that you know what you are doing here is you are building you are taking delta of the changes right now if you were to let's say if you were to keep the base the docker as a single image and keep it pristine and then let's say as docker image um a second user comes and change makes a change to the docker image and you commit the image as a single file altogether what you will have is is a large copy of Uh, of the docker images right so there'll be a uh, docker image 1 which is the base image let's say it's of size 10 mb and then a user comes makes changes to it he will have another use another copy of 10.2 max so he has created made some changes which are equivalent to around 0.2 mb and there's a third user which comes who makes the changes to the base and then he gets around 10.5 max so there's a 0.5 max worth of effort which is gone by the th- third user now this leads to you know container managing the containers pretty difficult so if you were to ma- have all these containers on your local system then you will have totally 10 plus 10.2 plus 10.5 which is 30.7 megabytes of space consumed whereas if you had this concept of layers over layers then all that you have to maintain is the delta so the the space that is required is now 10 plus 0.2 plus 0.5 which is 10.7 mega gigs mega bytes so let's ex- see this with an example now look at this look at this architecture of docker you have a base image which has got two files checked in which is file1.txt and file2.txt and this assume that this has been built using docker um using a docker file and it has been checked in by the the big the person who started the project first now let's say as a user i go and delete the file1.txt from this image and create a new image now instead of having a combined size of lower one and lower n for my image all that i do is you know all the previous changes i pull from the base whereas all the all the all my changes are in this delta uh, image layer called lower end 
now let's say these are all checked in and then uh, lower one and lower two lower n are have already been checked in and there's a third user which comes in and then in a, the container while running the container so it's at the container layer right so these are all the image layer this is the container layer you go ahead and add and install some applications into the container and you also create two files file3.txt and file4.txt and you check that in so what happens here is now the, this person who was who was using this container has his changes going into this upper director directory or upper layer whereas the lower ones remains remain read only so you don't tamper the original image at all so these layers the base image layer and the subsequent image layers that are built on top of the the current one or current base stay as read only they don't get tampered with whereas the upper one upper one will have all the ch changes that you have made at the container level and what you finally see what the end user finally sees when he's loaded the container is you know he or she is able to see the file1.txt the file2.txt file3.txt and file4.txt the submerge so you have basically merging the content from the lower layers and the upper layer upper the container layer and you get a consolidated view of this or rather consolidated image of this so this is how the linux uh, union file system works there are two file systems that we use one is the overlay and the other one is the aufs i leave it to the user's discretion but for, for my demo i'm purpose i'm going to use the overlay file system so let's quickly see a short demo of this feature so what i do here is Okay, pardon. So let's get a clean slate. There's a folder here called mount. So let me quickly create a set of folders. So let me create something called a lower directory. Directory. Let me create something called a upper directory. Let me something create something called work directory, which is not something that we discussed and it's not so relevant. And then you have the merge direct now what I do is I run a mount command so I call sudo minus t I use as I said it here I use the Linux overlay file system so this is one way of achieving the union file system uh, you can also go for AUFS and then I say that my lower directory is equal to slash home slash Unfortunately, on Unix systems or other Ubuntu system, it expects the complete path to be given instead of giving a relative path. So, upper to equal to slash home slash slash mount slash upper to equal to slash. Cool. Now let's go to the lower directory and create something called file1.txt and file2.txt. You see here? Yeah. Then let's go and see in the merge directory what you could actually see. You're able to see that those contents. Right. Now let's go to the upper directory and I create something called file3.txt. And let's see what this one contains now. You see file3.txt. What does the lower directory contain? You see only those two files. So that is the catch. So when the system works on when, so the, when the Docker system actually works, the when, and the user makes some changes at the container layer. That does not percolate down into the lower layers. It stays there and you get a consolidated view by aggregating all these read-only image layers at the lower level followed by 
the uh, upper followed by you know your changes in the upper layer now let's little let's get into a little more discussion over this because you know this might be a bit confusing in the first uh, instance so let's say now you have have a, have an nginx image and you have created a container so user 1 has created a container here and user 2 has con- created a container here so other uh, so now uh what the user 1 has done is he or she has created a new file called file5.txt here and user user 2 uh, has created a or rather edited the file called file4.txt now what do you want to see here is you know uh, the lower layer the base image had file1.txt and file2.txt the next layer which was eventually accepted as a uh, as a change had only file2.txt the third layer had file3.txt the file3.txt was retained as it is in the upper uh, directory and you create a new file for file4.txt and you will have the user editing it in the container and here user has not edited anything but you know he, he has probably deleted the file4.txt and created a new file called file5.txt what you can see here is you know the the each user container will get its own merge namespace and the changes the active changes will be visible there and those changes will be merged into the into the system as a layer so it can become lower n plus 1 when the user commits those changes and pushes this image in. so here are the steps file 5.txt newly created in container 1 file 4.txt deleted and file 4.txt modified in container instance 2 now in the earlier versions of uh, docker it used to maintain it used to use a overlay file system 1 and it all the lower level lower layers used to maintain a hard symbolic link to the lower to the to its immediate predecessor so that has been removed in overlay fs2 and you know the containers namespace directly refers to these individual individual layers instead of working instead of maintaining hard symbolic links at each lower level layer except the base one thank you for listening